Hey everyone, Shark here. Got another one for you today. Uh, this is a 1v1 on Pacino Stalemate, but I noticed a lot of people are struggling against DAC in, in the comments. So I asked a few of my friends that are actually good at the game to help me deal with the more cheesy DAC strats. This is a replay of that being executed at a very high level, so strap in. As the Axis, we have Nanami from South Korea, ranked number 57 with the DAC, and of course, he's using the Italian Infantry Battle Group. And then playing as the Americans, we have Ares from the US, using the Special Operations Battle Group. That's it. Let's go. Alright, so we got Ares down here on the uh, the south side of the map in blue. Pacino stalemate again. Going double scout, uh, getting the barracks out. And then we have Nanami uh, playing as the DAC. And um, so he's in red, starting at the north side, top side of the screen here. He's got his Panzer Pioneers coming out. He's getting the crowd shits and, and a Panzer Grenadier. So uh, we'll take a look at this. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna <laughs> not gonna rehash the intro. What I will do though is take a look at the tack map and, and we'll talk again about how much this map has changed. I really like this though. It rewards kind of aggressive fuel and resource play on one side and then control of the map and VPs on the opposite side. Um, so, you know, thinking about this from my perspective, I'm probably good. I would lean here and try to control these two VPs, but it also depends what your opponent is doing. And if you have the bandwidth to counter cap on the opposite side, especially with two scout squads, uh, you can work some pretty significant VP advantages. It looks like, you know, that crowd shoots an out. Um, that obviously provides a lot of capping power. And actually, Ares going for an engineer now in addition to his rifle squad. So a lot of utility on the field for him. Uh, and he's kind of spreading out. And these garrisons are going to continue to be a problem uh, for the USF and for the DAC, who, who basically lack early garrison clearing tools. Um, the USF can get a mortar, but it's slow when it comes to the cost of field presence. Pioneers obviously can get a flamethrower, but that's a choice that you got to make. If Now, against USF, Panzer Pioneers getting a flamethrower is a good choice, I think. Um, just because they, they don't start with an engineer, so you don't have to be as worried about mines. Um, answer, this, I mean, this is hilarious. So these guys are in green cover, but it doesn't actually matter because they're well within the point blank mechanic. So they're still taking full damage from these Panzer Pioneers. Over here are scouts versus the crowd shits in. Okay, and now we got a Jeep coming out. And so Aerie is very clearly worried about some of the, the DAC strengths in this game. And a Jeep... Uh, is a good natural predator for the crowd chosen because it, it has better mobility it can reverse i think the crowd is probably faster uh, and got a bonus uh, to its overall kind of mobility but it still can't reverse so if you can corner the crowd chosen you can do a lot of damage the downside is he's got to get this jeep uh to vet one before it can cap oh and it's actually going to take a lot of damage from these panzer grinds Good use of the rifles to close the distance here. Two Panzer Grand squads. This is a pretty formidable force, especially with the way the patch is currently. So Aerie is using scouts and engineers to kind of cap up on the flank. He's got to be careful. These rifles are just going to continue to bleed here uh, if he keeps throwing them up against this wall. Uh, engineers, you could see a satchel. Now, worth noting, so Aries went special operations. He's getting infantry support center. Nanami went uh, Italian infantry. He's getting a second Panzer Pioneer out. Yeah, here's the flamethrower from the engineers. Oh, scouts take a lot of damage from the crouches and the Panzer Pioneers. Engineers do a bunch of damage, but I mean, still four models from the these Panzer Grenadiers here. So without the model drop, that's not really going to cost anything. Jeep finds the crowd shits in. Crowdschutzen takes a bunch of damage, and now the return path of this jeep is going to have to be pretty deliberate to avoid these Panzer Grands and the, the increased penetration that infantry have now at short range. Are taking it personally. And like Ares, I'm just like, in my mind I'm screaming like, he needs to get gr tech grenades so he can at least force these guys out of the, the garrison. Um, oh, we went for the weasel with the pack out, sir. I like that choice. Captain hits the field, a second rifle squad hits the field. But man, his uh, rifles are just bleeding a lot to these Panzer Grenadiers. Here comes the engineers with the flamethrower. Yep. So they they just immediately jump out of the building. So will these Pugrens. And they're going to bleed a lot out in the open. The engineers will. Pugrens do a lot of damage. Very accurate. 
Here we go. More kind of mass infantry. What he really needs to do is is actually inflict some casualties on these P-Grands. Here we go. Yeah, they get back in the building. They might bleed a lot here to this flamethrower burst. They just lose one more model. Oh, look at that damage distribution. Ares forces them off, but only drops a couple of models. Uh, I can hear people screaming in the comments already. So you got, so Nanami went Italian infantry. He's one command point away from being able to unlock Guastatori and the L6s. Ares finally kind of retook the center here and is going to push forward. And now he's going to throw his captain with that. That LMG is, uh, does some decent range damage. And then he's going for the motor pool. So the, the solution, at least according to Orange Pest, uh, for dealing with kind of the Guasatori and L6 spam, or uh, Krodschitzen, uh, into L6 spam, is basically to go Jeeps, rifles, uh, and then motor pool with a Greyhound or a Chaffee. Oh, that scout. Wow, the scout gets away with just a shred of health. All these Pegrins are very low health, so Ares could take advantage of this here. Crowdshifton's going to bounce away. Scout's on the flank. Now the green cover is working in Ares' favor. The Jeep gets Vet 1, which is super helpful in giving Ares that capping power. Crouch just enforced to back up one squad of Panzer Grandiers retreats, and now he's just sacrificing these Pgrans. And look, we already see the two L6s hit the field. Now, they're going to be the L6s with their guns will do a ton of damage to the Jeep. Yep, Ares sees it. So, not doing as much damage as they used to. Uh after the, the patch changes. Greyhound coming out for Ares. Now both the flamethrower upgrades hit and here comes the base side. And this is what everyone's kind of been worried about. What's been kind of exploitative. Um, and what I think is going to be the focus of the upcoming hotfix. Right, they're going for these base buildings. Greyhound's still a couple seconds away from popping. All the infantry kind of circling around. They can't retreat. Oh, this is ugly. But what, what he doesn't realize is that by focusing on trying to knock out these infantry, actually, Ares has kept him alive, keeping him within reinforcement range of the headquarters. Greyhound hits the field. And now the L6 is forced to abandon their base dive. Oh, my... Holy cow. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even see that mine there. But that mine grabs both of the L6s. So, all right, there you go. That's how to beat the L6 base rush. Just have the heavy mines set up. Uh, well played. There's another mine here. I can't believe it hit both of them. That's incredible. Now you've got the mobile, uh, you got Captain Artillery coming in on the VP. The mobile Panzerjäger half track. Oh, that Jeep is probably done. Yep. Jeep gets smoked by Panzerjägers. Yeah, so Jeep goes down. Ares fighting to kind of get out of his base. Good grab of the cutoff by Nanami here, right? And then using his crotch just to kind of cap up. This is this half track with the Panzerjägers is a good answer to the Greyhound uh, and the Chaffee, but you, you need some sort of follow up. And so that's what we're seeing here. So Panzer Pioneer is starting to lay some mines. Now he, he's also teching fire support elements. Oh yeah, lots of mines. So yeah, Ares Engineer has a flamethrower. So no ability to sweep. He's actually going to hit this mine here. Oh, very lucky that he stops and kites. Another Engineer coming out. Yep, Ares is going to grab a sweeper here. Yeah, and now you see he's he's basically spreading it out. Nanami's kind of consolidating his HQ, and Ares is trying to regain some map control, grab the center, remove some of the VP pressure, um, regain his resources. This is where having those two scouts really helps because they cap so much faster. The biggest 
problem that Ares faces right now is he doesn't have many like combat units. He has a lot of utility on the field, but he has two rifle squads and a Greyhound. And this Greyhound is in danger from the 250 with these Panzer Jaegers. Yeah. All right, so that Greyhound's going to back off. Panzer Grenadiers in position on the Captain's Tree Path. They do a ton of damage now. Um, they may pick up this Captain. They probably will. Uh, with the LMGs, they definitely would. With the uh, the veteran squad leaders as well. Yep. So this Captain is done. If they stop to shoot accurately... Oh my goodness, I can't believe that got away. Med tent coming up for Ares, which that'll help his infantry. The Greyhound's here to cover. Does some damage to the Panzer Grenadiers. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Oh. Greyhound knocks out the mine that would have actually gotten a couple of models. Engineers push up. And they do force off the Panzer Grenadiers. So we've got the bike now spotting for the uh, the Pack 3 in the middle. Nice mine set off. Maybe they can pick up this Panzer Pioneer. Oh, so many mines. Oh my goodness. All right, so let's talk about this. Whenever you have an engineer unit that's laying mines, just shift click away after the mine placement because the most dangerous thing that can happen is exactly what happened here. They lay a mine and they're standing on it because it's complete. And then someone comes in, shoots at them and blows up the mine. Oh, here's what Nanami is doing. And so he's got the Kanona coming now and is bombarding Ares base. Wow, look at the range on that. That's literally in his base sector. Oh, this is going to be... Uh, that's a lot of damage to those buildings. Ares is going to have to divert his engineers to just do base repairs. Oh, Greyhound hits a mine. Yeah. Both players playing very, the, the defenses are very proactive, right? Lots of mines, lots of repairs. Um, this is going to be an interesting game for sure. But it looks like Ares at least weathered the initial kind of spam issues that he might have to deal with, right? The uh, the bikes, the L6s. Guastatori is still in the bank. I say, I thought Nanami got another howitzer out, but it, no, that's on cooldown. Now, Weasel with a pack howitzer on the field. And actually, this this Kanona, with the changes that they made to the two and a half ton med truck, is a good, is a better choice now because it comes with the truck that now you can use for healing. Oh my goodness. And with the extra damage that howitzers now do to infantry, this is potentially problematic. It just, it, it in, the base bombardment increases the micro that you need because you have to keep track of all of your units that are back in headquarters now. You can't just let them heal up. You have to move them out of the uh, impact area. Oh, that's going to be rough. And I, I think we've determined, here come the Guastatori. I think we've determined uh, that once the base buildings are destroyed, they can't be rebuilt uh, or repaired past once they're destroyed. So, um, so this is dangerous, and Ares has to continue to manage this. The good news is he's got a ton of fuel, but he is bleeding manpower. Uh, and with all of these utility units on the field, he's lacking just a little bit of combat power. He's got his pack howitzer firing. It looks like he's actually using the pack howitzer to bombard the Kanona. <laughs> Which is really effective, even though they can just immediately recrew it. So maybe that's going to be his uh, technique here with the, the pack howitzer, is to kind of stick and move. Bombard the Kanona, cause some manpower bleed, and then after every barrage, relocate the pack howitzer. Which again is something you can do with the, the click move. Alright, here come the Glossatory. So, as a reminder, the, the issue with the Guastatori right now, the Guastatori had one and a half fuel, oh, good grenade, he wasn't, didn't see it. They have one and a half armor, as opposed to one for every other uh, infantry unit. 
Um, that was supposed to get removed in exchange for... Oh, this captain's got to get out. The AT gun's about to knock down this building. In exchange for the armor reduction, they were supposed to get a flat 25% damage reduction, which I also don't like. But now you can see <laughs> that they're so chonky. And they take a ton of damage, but don't lose any models. And so no manpower cost. There we go. Drop one. No manpower cost to Nanami at all. Now, oh, the Panzer Jaeger half-track hunting the weasel. It's a good counter. Ares only has two rifle squads, so his ability to fight fight off some of these light vehicles uh, with utility is a little limited. But you see a good push through the center here. Actually using the scouts, caps, and an engineer. The veterancy is certainly helping. Pack Howitzer again hitting the Kanona. Ares checking up the tier 4. Nanami has got... He's floating a bunch of resources, but he's not built his tier uh, his tier four yet. Engineers forced to retreat. Kanona again bombarded the headquarters. I mean, he needs engineers to retreat anyway, just to repair that before it goes down. Greyhound, good counter to the Glossatory. Oh, now, now the flamethrowers pop. These scouts are done. No way. Oh, good mine. Pauses the Panzer Grenadiers up top. Ooh. Well, the scouts and the captain are going to get away again with minimal health. Greyhound here to challenge the Rossatori. Panzer Grenadiers hit another mine. So you see where all of Ares' munitions are going. Packhouts are in a great spot. Continuing to do a lot of damage. Packhouts are such a good unit. For the Americans, it really ma it makes the special operations battle group <laughs> worth playing. Now, this Greyhound at risk from this Pack 38 here. Oh, now whiz bang on the way for Ares. Uh, you'd love to see it. Oh, these engineers got to work on repairing some of these buildings. Well, at least the Kanona is focused on the Pack House, sir, and not the base buildings at the moment. Now, it looks like Ares is going to try to catch the crowd shoots in and the half-track out with a little bit of infantry here, plus up his fuel resources. Greyhound and Weasel also moving to support. Son of a bitch. I still don't remember. I don't. I hadn't seen Ares tech grenades. Alright, here's the whiz-bang. And then look at these, these scouts. Well, one's got a scout, so they're doing their stealth reconnaissance. Uh, good use on the flank. Ares, uh, if you play with him, you'll, you know, he knows what's going on, on your side of the map better than you do. Oh, these, well, these scouts are done. The Whizbang Barrage misses the Glossatory. But they focus fire on the Pack Howitzer instead. Now, Ares teching BARs to help his rifles deal with these infantry a little bit more. Pack Howitzer is cleared. Now, the Glossatory are going to have a long retreat here with nothing to do with these vehicles. But here comes the Panzerjäger half track. Glossatory dealing with a little bit of fire. Now, I'm going to nitpick Ares here. You know the guy is bombarding your base, doing the default construction site for the tank depot. Probably some additional risk that you didn't need. Oh no. Rifle squad goes down to the Krodschitz and Panzer Pioneers in the half track. Ares replacing, getting another rifle squad out. I, I, this makes sense to me. You need to have some of the more, like the hardier field presence that the DAC infantry just can't shove off. And the question is, like, what's the next move for Nanami here? He still hasn't teched up to his tier 4. He's leaving his Kanona kind of in the same spot. And the Pack Howitzer continues to hit it. Greyhound and Weasel trying to push off the, the Krodschitzen. Oh, this Pack Howitzer is going to get decrewed again here if Ares can't provide some support. Yeah, the Pegrans just do too much damage at range. 
Yeah, that's a lot of damage on the move for bolt action rifles. Um, especially at max range. Good anti-infantry loader picks up a couple of models. Scout's now able to cap. Oh my goodness, that first round from the Kanona. And here comes the whiz bang. Is it gonna shoot? All oh, right, it's setting up. Preemptive shot. Oh, the weasel gets knocked out on the flank. Oh, he doesn't see. He just walks to Glossatory. There's the pack 38. So Glossatory lose two models to the whiz bang. Over here, rifle and cap and push off the Panzer Jaegers. Strafing runs. He just walked this Glossatory straight into the strafing run. Target it again. Uh, but it looks like they're going to escape. Now, here's the pack 38 per looking for the whiz bang. Yeah, no additional damage on the Glossatory there. So, with the infantry support center choice, Ares late game is limited to the kind of the stock options here for US armor. You can get Shermans, you can get the bulldozers, you can get the Hellcats. And then right now, oh, one engineer squad just immediately annihilated by a Kanona round. His pack outs is going to counter barrage, but he really needs to, to plus it up so he gets some durability. Uh, now the tank depot taking hits as well. Man, the scatter on those Kanona rounds. Yep, here comes the uh, Panzer Grenadiers. They clear the pack houser again. Oh. Greyhound's snared, but he could knock out this half track here. No, nope. half track's going to back up. Oh, now. Nanami steals the pack howitzer. Why isn't he building his tier 4 though? Like I feel like with his resources like a, a couple of P3s or a Panzer 4 would would really go a long way. Ares is able to knock out the uh, the half track and here comes a whizbang barrage onto these Dak Panzer Grenadiers. Oh, doing a ton of damage. One more good hit. Oh. But they won't get it, so the P-Grand squad gets, gets away. Another whizbang coming out for Ares. What a wonky build order. Oh, he's glossatory. So he cancels the second whiz and goes for a bulldozer. I really like that choice. Nanami finally attacking his tier four as well. Because apart from the artillery, the big threat is just the kind of the damage output and the durability of these uh, DAC infantry. Pigren's squads do really well at range, great at clearing team weapons. Glossatory are essentially invincible at this point. Well, Pack 38 gets a couple of shots off. This Greyhound's probably done, even with the strafe coming in. Oh, the the shot whiffs. If he, no, oh, it that's a shame. That Greyhound probably could have gotten out of there. Anti-infantry loiter just not doing a ton of damage. Oh, uh, Ares needs to keep this tank depot alive. Uh, his engineer, he, he's replaced his lost engineer squad. Uh, here comes the bulldozer. Oh, I like this push. Pack outs are cleared. There is no DAC counter for this. Now, they, they're going to do the engine crit here, but I love this. The whiz bang coming in as well. He's just trying to destroy the Kanona. Using the anti-infantry loiter to cover uh, his infantry and his vehicles. Kanona is cleared. Not destroyed. Pack 38 coming up. Does a lot of damage, but isn't destroying any of these vehicles. Bulldozer's going to slowly try to back up here. Infantry to cover. Whizbang's going to get out. Rossitori don't drop any models, but take some damage. Now a Hellcat coming out for Ares. I think he is concerned about Nanami's ability to call in some uh, vehicles, which you see a P3 on the way. He's calling Captain Artillery onto the Kanona as well. 
So the upside to the patch where now this vehicle can only recruit every 60 seconds instead of 30. Uh, it's going to give Ares some breathing room. Now here comes the P3. Ares currently a little light on AT. Uh, yeah, everything's going to retreat. But a Hellcat about to hit the field. Which the Hellcat, when supported, uh, should do quite a bit of work. Man, Nanami took some big losses though. Panzer Jaegers are gone. Uh, one squad of Panzer Grenadiers is gone. He has to recrew. Uh, let's see, the pack howitzer is destroyed. Oh, here's the Hellcat. This Panzer uh, three might have overextended. Now the Hellcat and the Bulldozer can push. One more shot. Oh, that AT gun's done. Bulldozer is snared. Hellcat's there to support, but it's not required. The Panzer Grenadiers are going to capture that center point, and then uh, Nanami's going to briefly take away some of the VP pressure. Panona's finally recruited here. I wonder if he's going to continue to go for the base bombardment. I think at this point, Anami needs to use this uh, for something resembling, you know, tactical use instead of the base bombardment. But it looks like, looks like we're about to see hits here. Yeah, he's just going for the headquarters. So it looks like Ares has successfully weathered the storm here. Now we see advanced logistics coming in for Ares. So he wants to exploit the manpower advantage. Scouts smoke off the Panzer Grenadier squad while the uh, whiz bang and the bullets are getting repaired. And now we see Ares infantry unit moving up here. Panzer three still being repaired, and the Panzer Pioneers take a ton of casualties uh, forward with the Panzer three. So the captain's going to capture this point up. Now the bulldozer is healed up, and these Panzer Grenadiers are at real risk. The Pack 38 is out of position here. There we go. It's going to get a shot, but one shot from the bulldozer to clear that Pack 38. Engineer is going to cap the center point. Oh, Canona coming in. That's a good. That's the appropriate use of the Canona there. Oh, this is the long range barrage from the Whiz Bang. The Vet 1 ability. Still focusing on that Canona, trying to bleed it out. I like. I really like this ability from the Whiz Bang. Now, unfortunately, the scatter hasn't been very kind to him. Oh, one or two more good hits. There we go. Canona's decrewed as the second Panzer III hits the field. Another anti-infantry loiter coming in. Now, Ares attacking grenades. Hellcat supported by rifles. The rifle is going to retreat. Uh, from the Guasatori. I don't know what that round was. It came in and hit the Guasatori. Did a bunch of damage, but no no kills. Hellcat's going to back up as well. And I think Ares sees this, right? He's about to get a triple cap on here. He doesn't need to win these engagements. What he needs to do is uh, basically keep Nanami pinned back here. And he's, he's got a second Whizbang in the queue. I would go for a second Hellcat, because with the Bulldozer and the existing Whizbang, I I think he's got enough to cover the uh, the infantry. I think what he needs is to deal with these DAC vehicles. Oh, Captain Mortar Barrage onto the Pack 38 forces it to displace, but still doing damage. Bulldozer absorbs a shot from it. Panona back recruit, but Ares has the triple cap on, and yeah, Nanami, his unit didn't actually get in the cap circle. Rossitori going to try to cap the center. Long range Whizbang barrage again on the the Canona here. Good hits. It's getting a, a buff from that med truck. It's gained better than C1. And here comes a rifle push supported by the bulldozers and another whiz bang. Could that be the end of the Guastatori? 
But no, not with the armor, not with the damage reduction. But Ares is going to be able to cap up the center point and disrupt the uh, the pack 38 here. Is forced to back up. Oh man, that one Vasatori just getting away. <laughs> Engineers now just a full time base for para duty is wild. But that's a good way of occupying 400 of your opponent's manpower. Pegrins push off the captain here on the side. And reset the view. <clears throat> now, it's important to note, Nanami at this point is getting no resources. Um, and he only has one VP, so he's still bleeding uh, there. But he's been completely cut off with the exception of this munitions point. Yeah, here's the P3. The P3 is not going to be able to stand up to the Hellcat. The pack 38 will help, but it is out of position. Harry's just immediately going to counter cap this VP with the scout. Panzer guns in the center. Oh, the incendiary barrage from the bulldozer. He's got the strafe available again, but not enough munitions. He's actually going to use flares to spot. Oh, the scouts could potentially get run down here by these P3s. Yeah, he retreats them, but it's too late. Using the flares to again spot uh, for a long range barrage on the Kanona. Something I gotta test, if that reduces the scatter, having active sight. I think in Code 2 it used to. Oh, if they could clear this Pack 38, Hellcat's gonna get snared. Pack 38 cleared. Med truck is able to back up. Oh, uh, the Kanonas continue to reinforce. Here comes the Panzer III. Try some... Oh, this rifle squad. If the Pack 38 will be cleared. Hellcat. Hellcat and Bulldozer are forced off by the Panzer III, but it's also low health and un unable to really pursue. The full health Panzer III now coming in through the center. Ares getting another Hellcat out, which I think he needs at this point. He's got his whizbangs off to the side, worried about the uh, base bombardment. Oh, this uh, rifle squad. The Kanona hits here, this could do a lot of damage. He's got the grenades, maybe he can get a double snare. No, we're not gonna see a double snare, the rifle's just too low health. Both scout squads have been killed at this point. Here comes the base barrage. Engineers busy repairing some of these vehicles. Whizbang going for the Glossatory here. Does a ton of damage, but only drops one model. And that's the problem, they get that flat damage reduction. Captain finds the P3s being repaired, but is forced back. Uh, Ares is so close to closing this one out. But Nanami, one, now he's floating some manpower, so I wouldn't be surprised to see some additional armory upgrades here. Something like Rapid Advance could be really helpful, allowing his P3s to capture points. So now two Hellcats out on the field. Ares can keep them together and force this off. Here come the Panzer Grenadiers. Yeah, Nanami's just floating some manpower, and, and I think there'd be some value here in investing either in another... P, uh, P Grand Squad, or another Grossatory Squad, or just some upgrades. You don't want to be floating manpower. Alright, so one P3, hard snared, engine crit, Hellcats coming in, Captain uh, Barrage coming in on the Pack 38. Alright, one P3 goes down in exchange for a Hellcat. Oh, well, Pack 38 flips around, but that Hellcat's going to get away. And one Panzer Grenadier squad knocked out as well. And Anami is 600 manpower. So he's going for another squad of Guastatori. Which, from an anti-infantry perspective, it makes sense. I think the Pegrens, if you can hold on to them, Pegrens are better at this point. Because, well, I say, I say that. Ares doesn't have any team weapons for him to clear. Um... But against the bedded rifles with BARs, the Glossatory are going to still take a bunch of damage. At least the Panzer Grenadiers have snares, can do damage at range. Yeah, Glossatory force these rifles who are on their own to retreat. 
All right, so they're going to recrew the Pack 38 here and get a snare off on this bulldozer. But the Whizbang continuing to hit the Kanona. This time with a close range, full strength barrage. Bulldozer clears the Pack 38. Kanona shooting at the bulldozer. Here we go. We're going to see. Pending cooldown, Panzer Grenadiers, oh, they're just going to bleed here against this bulldozer. The P3s, or the single P3, kind of retreating to the rear. It needs to push and support the infantry here with this. This bulldozer is just going to eat away. <laughs> oh my god, look at the durability of this Guastatory. There we go. I'm not really sure what the thought process is here, diving in this deep. Oh, that Guastatory squad. Somehow it gets away. Med truck finally knocked out by the whiz bang. Canona going for a base bombardment again. The second squad of Guastatory coming in here to the center. I think he, Nanami knows he can't afford to give up the center VP at all. Oh, good opportunity. Oh, this Pencil Grenadier's retreat. Hellcat chips away at the P3. Triple Fed Guastatori squad taking some damage. P3 following up with the Triple Fed Engineer squad. Oh, Hellcat needs to get away. Bulldozer's there to force off the P3. Pack 38 out of position. Whizbang's still here on the flank, and it looks like Ares is going to cap up this flank VP now. So pressure is about to be back on for an Anami. Bulldozer, Hellcat getting healed, not in the base, but near the base. Look at the health of these base buildings. It's insane. Tank Deep almost destroyed by the Kanona, but the Kanona, it, it's back up to Vet 1. It's bombarding again. Let's see what its target is. It's the Tank Depot. The Ares might lose his Tank Depot here, but it also might not matter. This P3 gets engine critted, and the Captain's going to cap up this flank VP. Commando is out now for Ares. Oh, they pop the white phosphorus. Rifle's gonna stand on the center VP supported by the bulldozer. Prevent the counter cap. Canona rounds coming in on the center as well. Second P3 on the field. Hellcat's in position, supported by the commandos. Rossitori unable to cap that the far VP in Ares is going to basically uh, cap the center VP here, or at least decap it. And it looks like, yeah, decap's on. He's staying on the far VP, and that's going to be it. All right, I'm hesitant to even put this build order up here because I don't really want to feed the cheese, but we're only a couple of days from a hot pick, so here it is anyway. All right, Nanami, obviously Italian infantry battle group, starts with Panzer Pioneers, Krod Schutzen, uh, selects his battle group and then gets two Panzer Grenadiers out and then a second Panzer Pioneer. From there, he techs into the light support company. He hits the two CPs and he unlocks the L640 light tanks, which he uses, upgrades with flamers and immediately dives Ares base. He follows up with a Panzer Jaeger mechanized group uh, to deal with Ares Greyhound, which I think is a good, uh, good counter. Uh, you see those vehicles kind of following each other around the map for a while. Then he techs fire support elements to get a pack 38 out. This is where he does the, the Toad Kanona. Um, if you focus on this side, the left side of the battle group tree, you can get that out pretty early as you saw. Plus it comes with a 2.5 ton utility truck, which then you just convert to a med truck. So uh, good choice there, really effective use of kind of manpower and resources. From there, he gets his first squad of Guastatori, uh, upgrades veteran squad leaders, gets his tier four out. There's a long gap between when that Guastatori squad hits the field and when tier four gets built. And so he's floating a lot of resources for quite a while, uh, unable to kind of like land the knockout blow on Ares. Um, I don't think he thought the match was gonna go this long. From his tier four, he gets two Panzer threes. He eventually gets a second squad of Guastatori, and then he eventually replaces one of his Panzer threes before the end of the game. Um, big thing here, I would have liked to see him invest more in the armory upgrades, uh, especially towards the end of the game. For a while, he was floating a lot of manpower he did have some light vehicles on the field, 
right? So there's nothing wrong uh, with getting the vehicle survivability kits or the penetration. Um, I think, though, the best thing he could have done early, because he had the fuel, is to get tier four so he can start getting rapid advance um, and the emergency repair kits for the vehicles. So then now even his half track can like cap territory. It doesn't need to have the Panzer Jaegers in it. Um, stuff like that. The P3 has been able to sit on territory points and capture them or at least prevent Americans from decapturing might have helped him with the VPs in the end. Um, I'm not a big fan of the base bombardment thing in 1v1s. I think it's just kind of bad manners, but that's that's me personally. It is a strategy uh, up to you to determine if it's valid. I want to focus more though on how Ares countered uh, all of these moves that have been uh, a little frustrating for players following the patch. All right, so for Ares, uh, he goes uh, two scouts, builds a barracks, selects the special operations battle group, which like I did not see coming, but he uses some of its abilities really, really well. Uh, the two scouts is great, uh, especially on this map, which plays kind of shorter and wider. Um, and against the DAC, who like to concentrate their forces, two scouts allows you to cap up the flanks really quickly. Ares has great map awareness, so he uses them really well. From there, Rifleman engineers early, and he starts to lay mines. I didn't even see some of the mines until uh, the L640s uh, found them themselves, so uh, good use there. He gets a Jeep out, uh, obviously without the immediate Vet 1 from the armored battle group, right? It can't capture, but he does use it pretty well, hunting the crowd, shits in, kiting infantry, etc. Um, so good thing to keep in mind, even if you're not going to go armored, the Jeep has a lot of utility. Eventually you get to Vet 1, eventually it can capture, etc. Uh, goes infantry support center, um, which he eventually uses the advanced logistics later. Um, with this build, I could also potentially see you know, the captain is super useful. He uses it all the time. With this build, I could see mechanized support center also being pretty good, um, you, allowing you the 76 mil Shermans at the end of the game. But as you see, he doesn't need them. It's a second rifle squad out. Goes for the motor pool. So you see, he's really prioritized his fuel spending to getting the motor pool and getting the Greyhound out. And the Greyhound hits as the L640s are basically in his base. So perfect timing. I don't think he could manage that a whole lot better. Gets a, a second engineer squad out when he hits a mine, realizes he needs sweepers. He calls in the weasel and pack howitzer combo. I really like this. Uses a pack howitzer to counter barrage uh, the Kanona, which we'll talk about. The weasel also gives him some mobile capping and, uh, and counter crowd shits and uh, type work there. Then he goes for ten, uh, the tank depot tier four. Gets a Sherman whiz bang out, right? So he doesn't have to waste the CPs uh, since he has the tank depot. He can go for production. Potentially risky with the base bombardment coming in um, to go for a production based approach, but it is just a whiz bang. So it's not the end of the world. Uh, it's not like you're trying to build uh, or trying to do call in easy aids or whatever, right? Like that's that would be the scenario where if your base is getting bombarded, I would go for the call in over the production. Uh, he techs up BARs to help his rifles deal with the uh, the late game DAC infantry, which helps, but they still really can't take 1v1s. Uh, replaces a lost rifle squad, replaces a lost engineer. Gets the Sherman bulldozer, which his use of the bulldozer uh, really helps him turn this game around and start to really whittle away at the DAC infantry and impose some manpower bleed. Gets a Hellcat out to deal with the P3s. This is where he techs advanced logistics. He was floating quite a bit of fuel. So this helps him get up some manpower and afford uh, costlier engagements with the DAC infantry. Goes for the grenade package. I think it's super useful. The, I think the temptation when you're facing a DAC opponent like this is to go grenades early to snare the vehicles. But I actually think waiting until he got the motor pull and the Greyhound out makes a lot of sense. Um, you're going to lose a lot of the rifles trying to approach those vehicles to throw a snare. And so having a Greyhound is a much better counter. Um, so that I think... Even though he waited kind of late, it makes sense to wait for the grenades there. He gets a second whiz bang, uh, which he uses well. I was a little questionable on this at the time, but then he does get a second Hellcat, and so it ends up um, working out for him. And then he gets a squad of commandos late game. I think this makes sense. If you have this battle group and you need late game infantry, at this point, grab the commandos. They're just going to scale better. Plus, you can flip them into anti-vehicle mode with the bazookas. Uh, makes total sense there. Okay, so I just wanted to highlight a couple of things here in the post-match. It was a long match, and you kind of saw the counters happen uh, in live time. But so first off, Orange Pest has a recipe for dealing with the DAC cheese, right? Get Jeeps, go heavy into rifles early, spread them out, like spread the map out, try to bleed the DAC opponents. Uh, that 
starts by making it afford uh, hard to afford the L6s, right? The L6s, you have to pay for two at a time, um, which means they hit the field harder, but it also means you're not going to deal with them trickling on and causing a lot of damage. So if you can inflict some manpower bleed onto your DAC opponent, that helps. And then he says, focus on getting the motor pool and the Greyhound out early. The L6s, especially once they have the flamers, they can't counter the Greyhound. Uh, Zooks have been tested and are basically ineffective. There's just too much manpower bleed until the Bazooka squads gain veterancy. Um, so one, you know, especially one Zook squad by itself, really just get run over. Uh, a couple would be good against other vehicles, but the L6 is coming with the flamers uh, and they just hit too hard. Uh, a couple of other notes here. So the Kanona base bombardment is really effective, especially on this map, which is shorter and wider. That that also though allowed for some counterplay. So I imagine the same thing to like Faymonville, right? He's able to put the Kanona in his base where it's covered by the base machine guns, uh, but can still bombard the enemy's base sector. Um, the problem though is the map is wide enough that Ares is able to both spread it out and then also push through the middle to actually challenge that Kanona. Um, on a map like Toronto, the base bombardment howitzer stuff is really really hard to deal with just because of the way the map's built. Um, this is a strategy again, like I'm not a huge fan of, but it is a strategy and there is a cost associated with it. Um, the Kanona is not an emplacement, so it can be decrewed, but it also is much harder to destroy than say an M2A1 howitzer or the BL 5.5. So something to keep in mind there. Um, the Obiche doesn't really come out until much later. Uh, I think Tightrope has a couple of videos about that. So cool when it does show up, but a lot fewer shells and it comes out much later in the game. Um, I thought Ares did a good job countering this initially with the pack howitzer to kind of clear the Tenona and inflict some manpower bleed. Um, again, I just want to hit the, the shift click to queue up orders, right? So experienced players know this, um, but you can queue up orders by holding shift and clicking. So one of the things you should do here, anytime your engineers lay mines, shift click off the mine. So they plant the mine and then move away. Um, the Nami lost a Panzer Pioneer squad because of that. You can do the same thing with barrages. So you tell your pack howitzer, bombard the Kanona, and then shift click it off to the side. It'll basically, by the time the Kanona realizes it's being bombarded and identifies the spot, if it tries to do counter battery, your pack howitzer is likely to move out of the way, and then you can continue that fight back and forth. The Kanona is harder to move because it has to be towed, so there is an advantage there to the pack howitzer. Uh, when playing DAC in general, you have to inflict manpower bleed. They will be okay on fuel. Most of their stuff is relatively cheap on fuel, except for the, the eight rods now. Um, so finding ways to get advantages in the infantry fight, playing really smart with cover, using smoke, using uh, terrain and sight blockers to get in flanks, really important. Uh, mines, mines win games, always. Uh, you saw that the mine finished off those two L6s and kept them from roaming the map and causing problems for the next five, 10 minutes in the game. Um, and then in general, when fighting the DAC, they're really strong when they're combined. Their units deal a lot of damage, but they struggle with durability and like wide engagement. So in one-on-ones, um, DAC units usually lose, uh, you know, and then usually as the allies, you have a numerical advantage. You can set up 2v1s. Um, so when in doubt, spread the map out. And I, I think uh, Ares did a really good job of that. It's really challenging to do. That's why the TAC map is so important. But I think that also helped him in the long run. Um, the last thing, uh, I hit on it in the cast a little bit. If your base is getting bombarded, don't use the default, uh, building construction positions, like actually micro your buildings, even if they're not just spread them out, right? Obviously there's some scatter, but what you don't want is, uh, your opponent to get a cheap building destruction, um, just because he's bombarding your headquarters and you built everything really close together. Anyway, that's it for this one. Good luck. I'm sure the hotfix will be here soon. If you have other comments or other things you've seen work against this, let us know. Throw it in the comments. Thanks for watching, and that's going to be it.